roads and bridges at the local level. I'm not dealing with uh, the things at the state level. I'm dealing not only with national level when we're talking about jobs, now all of a sudden the area, though I'm a Marine, I still have to learn about dealing with our borders, foreign affairs, all of those issues. But I also know that if you put your nose to grindstone, keep your ears open, don't go in with an attitude that, you know, hey, I already know everything, but work and find out the best place to seek out the information to get the wise, to get the best information you can to have a, make wise decisions. That's I've done it before. The ACA has been a huge contentious issue in, in the House of Representatives. What what would your I mean the Republicans have taken fifty votes to repeal. Would you what would your stance be? I mean, it, it seems to okay. be more common sense. If, 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 it was, if it was Mike Bost and I was not one of 435, then I'd repeal and replace. But I don't have that ability. I have to work, as I said before, with what is there and with colleagues. I don't disagree with the original idea. I, I say it should be affordable. It should be portable, and it should deal with pre-existing conditions. But for someone to all of a sudden pass a bill and say, well, well, let's pass it and find out what it does, that's crazy. And it's proved out that way. And the big fear that I have right now is that come January 1, when the president releases the hounds, because that's basically what's out there, what's going to happen? Because it is not cheaper. It's not. And the amount of people who are choosing just not to have and wanting to take the penalty, I argue that there's not that many more people that are receiving health care. And we're not really, the Affordable Care Act, listen to what it says, it's Affordable Care Act, it had nothing to do with changing the cost of health care. It was who's going to get insurance, and all we did was shift how many, how the insurance is, is divvied out and what the cost is going to be. And the business, long-term business effects, I believe, will be devastating if we don't come up and work together with some sensible plans to try to cure the problems. I, don't, I, I want people to have quality health care, but I don't want it to be that controlled. Any specifics as to what you would do differently? Than, than what's you know, there, right, now, right now, there were 60, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm going to say near 60, because I don't know that were, and about 10 of them, I think, 8 or 10 of them were total repeals, okay, that were moved over to Harry Reid's desk. The others are modifications and or changes. And let me tell you who my advisor that I would trust more on this than anybody else is Congressman Dr. Price. He has the know-how and the understanding, and I will take his advice, well, along with my constituents, to search out the answers to the best of my ability, but I know, I, I'm going to trust a professional in that. I can also talk to the business owners and find out, you know, I, I know of small businesses that are changing their, you know. One thing is, is, is the, your 30-day work, why do you want to bump people back? Now, they say they won't, but they are. They're reducing their work, their, their amount of hours that they're working to meet the requirements instead of doing something that, that should be put in place that encourages them to employ as many people as they can for the best salary that they can. But it, end, it ends up discouraging that. Is, is that a matter, is that a matter though, of, uh, of uh, the government regulation causing that, or is, it the, is that a, an example of corporate greed? No, I think it's the government regulation causing that. And the reason I say that is because is a lot of the people I've talked to, they're, they're not corporate greed. There's mom and pop shops. But the some ACA, of them, some of the them, ACA only cover businesses that have 50 or more employees. I mean, that's hardly a mom and pop. Well, it is around. Yes, it is. Sure, it is. I got. You got um, the. Um, hold on, I'll, I'll remember the name. They we went and toured it the other day. They they in in Abbott. Alton, huh? Abbott. Abbott, Abbott and Alton. They've got employees right at that level that have been with them for years. And they're trying to make a decision on what they're going to do. What they do is, is they take lays, and they're big lays. I'm not talking 
the high school age. We're talking they, from all over the world. And they bring them in and they refab them and they resurface them and they rebuild them and restore them and put electronics into them. And the people that have been there have been there in 10, 15, 20 years and they're like a family. But the owner says, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Those are mom and pop shops. Just, just because they have 50 employees, and that, that's still mom and pops. We, there's just as many of those around. And I, I, the corporate greed thing, if you want to, I think that's a buzzword. I, I, I think that a lot of people that, when I ran Boss Truck Service, I cared for everybody I worked for. Everybody that worked for me. Cared for their family, I knew their family. It bugged me up whenever work got slow and I couldn't find it for them that day. In, in the trucking business, believe me, it's feast, feast or famine. And so I'm out beating the bushes. And then the next week, it's, my gosh, we're having to work so many hours, some of the family members are going, is dad ever going to come home? You know, or mom. And um, so, yeah, I'm, are there those big corporations that are totally out of touch? Sure. That's so. Awesome. But there's there's an awful lot of small businesses that are affected too, and that's where you put the level on the small. Business. It's not it's not working. The the Affordable Care Act is, is I mean there's it, it's a whole lot more than a problem with the turn up of a computer system and, and an entry system. And it, it, it's a as somebody told me, and, and it's just so I'm just saying this. It's not a but, that if you take the bill itself and the regulations that they've now already implemented in place and put it on the floor, stacked up, it's nine and a half feet tall. Why? Why? I mean, maybe it's got too big. Maybe we need to look at it. Maybe we need to be sensitive. Maybe we need to sit down and I mean, it was it was moved under non by a nonpartisan. I mean, it was it was a pretty bash that we're just going to shove it forward, and um, that's what happens when you shove things forward. In, in her campaign, and uh, specifically in, in the debate, Paula Bradshaw um, was highly critical of the Defense Department, the National Security Administration, referring to it as a failure. So. I ask you for the equivalent of a 300-word essay on the tension between freedom and security. How would you respond? I believe that um, we have to be very, um, and, and, and let me just take it to a, I understand the importance of a strong military. And the reason I say that is that I was in the Marine Corps during CART and was in during Reagan. We couldn't even go get our hostages out without having the helicopters break down flying across because they kind of just backed off and it was like after Vietnam, everybody was tired of it. And, 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 and then the other problems that developed and as far as lack of pay and, and, and things like that at that time. But we had a president that, that was not, under, not aware of exactly what the military, either military did or, or just chose to do other things. We have to make sure that we're a force in readiness. We have to make sure we're a force in readiness. Whether we like it or not, we're at that position in the world. We know that it's water under the bridge now, but they're trying to figure out what to do now that ISIS has done what they've done and all the problems that have occurred there, and are we going to now lose all the ground that our blood was shed for? Because we didn't put a force there just to maintain, not forever, but to maintain. And one of the best examples I have to explain that the way it is it was one of the former state reps in the state of Illinois was a guy by the name of Jim Watson out of Jacksonville. Jim Watson and I are both Marines. Jim was actually in the first desert storm. And um, then actually as state rep, went back into the Marine Corps, took a staff sergeant's position. We covered his legislative office for him for about a year and a half while he went over to try to set up governments, municipal 
and, and, and regional governments in Iraq. And he came back, and he and I were talking, and he said, Mike, I said, so Jim, what was it like? He said, Mike, think about this. He said, we're trying to teach a group of people about democracy and how free elections work, and that all of a sudden in our country, I run for office, I win, the other guy steps out quietly, we shake hands, the other gal steps out quietly, we shake hands, we go through, we change over, and life goes on. Mike, it isn't that that existed in that country 500 years ago, a thousand years ago. Since the beginning of time, the only thing they know is the biggest stick wins. Now, we set up a democracy, a, 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 a government that was working. But sometimes you have to just, you don't have to do more than just let them know that it's still a presence to kill, put in the back of their mind. No, if, if you don't do it this way, it, it, it's going to, then we're going to be here. And therefore, it would have stopped what we had. But let me put, you another, put that in another perspective, though. My thoughts on the military from a different perspective is that whenever I was in the Marine Corps, I never knew how my mom and dad felt. Never knew. I thought, I'm going, I, was, I, was, I went in at 18 years old, and the Iran hostage situation was going to go in, and I was going to save the world. About three weeks into boot camp, I realized, okay, you're not going to save the world. You're just going to survive and get through this. But um, the thing that happened to me personally is the day that my son went to Iraq. And anybody who is in these positions that at some point might have something put in front of them where they will have to vote to send our sons and daughters that's going to be a thing in the back of my mind that clicks so hard because the worst, not the worst day, but one of the scariest days in my life was the day that I walked him down that, to go through those metal detectors at the airport to get on that plane. I'd have done anything to take his place. So it's a different, so, so as I deal with these issues, I'll deal with that issue too. <laughs> you're, you're <up. laughs> I'm going to go with the what do you wish we asked that we didn't you already know the response and why the, you know the, yeah I, there is one thing there is one thing how do I feel about the fact that very few issues are being talked about on the, radio, on, on the TV ads and everything like that? Instead, we're going down the path that we're going down. And I, that does frustrate me because there's so many issues out there and so many things we could actually have a legitimate talk over. And in the debate that we had, and now we've got an upcoming debate, I hope that, that we continue to focus on issues and not even the jabs that I threw. Okay? I mean... That's not where it needs to go. We need to talk about what's really going on. What's really going on right now, whether it's the borders, whether it's we, we got a disease that we've got to try to figure out what in the world, uh, how we're going to make sure that, that, that if our president doesn't in implement no fly, what, what are we going to do to make sure everybody's informed? We had a conference call yesterday with the, uh, on the state level uh, to try to keep aware of this. And, and you know, I will. Give praise, we'll praise, thank the governor's office for, for putting that together. Um, but there are so many other issues that we need to be dealing with, and instead we go down this advertising of my boss through papers. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. you. Taking the time.